I'm Alberto Cavallo, uh, and this, this paper is joint work with Kolecki uh, Christoph, and um, it, we're going to try to understand what has been happening uh, during uh, the COVID crisis with inflation. And as this chart shows, uh, for various countries, I'm plotting here the annual inflation rates uh, during the COVID crisis. You can see that inflation did not fall by much at the beginning, and then it has rebounded quite quickly leading to a big debate about the potential causes. And one of the hypotheses that has been widely discussed, uh, but for which we have uh, relatively little data so far, is the fact that shortages and supply disruptions uh, have been playing an important role. And that's what we're going to try to answer uh, with this paper. Um, now, the um, data we use is data collected online. Um, part of my work with the Billion Prices Project over the years has been to try to leverage information that is available on the websites of large uh, retailers that sell both online and offline. And I'm going to extend that work here today to try to measure shortages. The data collection process is relatively straightforward. Behind every website we see uh, there's a very structured language and you can teach a software to identify pieces of information that you're interested in storing into a database. Uh, for the purposes of this paper, we focus on uh, basically 70 large retailers in seven countries that actually show out of stock information that we can use to uh, measure um, the shortages in a wide range of consumer goods. To give you an idea of uh, the, how uh, representative the sample is, on the last column of this table, we're showing you here the coverage of the goods CPI uh, weights in, in the CPI baskets, and it's roughly between 52 to 80 percent, depending on the country, for an average of 65 percent of the weights uh, in, of, of goods in the CPI. So it's a fairly large sample of goods covering uh, an important uh, part of the CPI basket. Now, how do, are we going to measure stockouts from this information? Well, when you go to any website, you can actually see that the retailer sometimes put these banners or signs that say, I'm sorry, this product is currently unavailable. I'm sure many of you have experienced this over the past year and a half. We're going to uh, count those products as a share of the total available each day for sale and introduce a measure of temporary stockouts. We call them temporary because in a way the retailer is suggesting that they're hoping to bring these goods back. Now, as, as the pandemic progressed, um, many of these goods actually started disappearing from the stores completely, and, and, and uh, we're going to call those permanent stockouts and measure just a fraction of items relative to pre-pandemic levels that have uh, completely disappeared. Um, and these are, you can think of them as discontinued goods. No? And, and we're going to aggregate up, we're going to measure these in different categories at disaggregated levels, but we're going to aggregate them up using CPI weight to get measures of stockouts that are comparable to the CPI uh, statistics that uh, we can also use to measure uh, the impact on inflation. So this chart here on figure two is showing you in particular the stockouts dynamics in the U.S. I'm going to focus on the U.S. first and then at the end tell you about other countries. You can see stockout levels on the left uh, rising from an average level in 2019 that was roughly between 14, uh, 13, 14 percent increasing very quickly in March of 2020 as the COVID pandemic struck, uh, reaching 35%. There's a period during the summer of 2020 where things seem to improve and the stockouts fell. But since then, we have experienced several spikes in stockouts. The first one in September of 2020, again in January, and yet another one in May where our sample stops. Or the chart on the right shows you, in fact, that the characteristics of the stockouts have changed. So the temporary stockouts are very visible because when you go to these websites or to a physical store, they, 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 this would be goods that have a sign that says this is out of stock. And, and those temporary stockouts, as you can see on the, on the graph here on the, on the red line, increased a lot at the beginning of the pandemic, but then seemed to fall back down to normal level or even below normal levels by September of 2020 in the US. Now, what has been increasing consistently during the crisis are what we're calling the permanent stockouts. And these are less visible, they're not so obvious, simply because the goods are no longer on display at all 
on the websites. Um, we may all feel it to some extent that there's less variety. But as you can see in the blue line here, there was an increase, a dramatic increase in this permanent so-called discontinuous goods at the beginning of the pandemic. Again, things seem to improve towards the middle of the, of, uh, of the summer of 2020. Some retailers were bringing the goods back, but then there's been a gradual increase and worsening of the situation. And in fact, by May of 2020, the U.S. is experiencing a very large share of uh, discontinued goods and, and shortages um, uh, as well. So these are um, not just changing in their nature, but also the sectors that are being affected is changing. Here I'm plotting a normalized uh, set of uh, stockout measures relative to initial levels in each sector. You can see that at the beginning, the stockouts affected nearly every second sector by different magnitudes. But then over time, some sectors recovered. And in particular, for example, uh, sectors such as other goods, which include personal care products, healthcare goods, and furnishing and household goods have tended to improve, while sectors like food and electronics have experienced persistent uh, shortages that continued quite strongly towards the end of our sample in May. We, we then move on to the analysis of what is the impact on inflation. We have stockouts information, but we also have detailed information about the prices of each one of these goods, so we can uh, build our own inflation metrics at very disaggregated sectors and see first if there's any correlation between sectors that were experiencing higher stockouts and sectors that were experiencing higher inflation. And that's basically what you're looking at here, just a simple correlation table that shows that uh, some sectors like electronics where the stockouts have been particularly persistent, we can detect a very high correlation between the level of stockouts and the annual inflation rates in those sectors. If you look overall, the, uh, uh, all the sample of goods, um, this uh, coefficient is basically telling you that the increase we're observing of, of, of base roughly 10 to 30% in the stockout level would be associated with an increase in the year-on-year -year inflation rate, the annual inflation rate of about 0.6% uh, in the US. But as I said, it's mostly affecting categories where these uh, stockouts have been more persistent. Now, we, we obviously, these are just contemporaneous rates and the effects of the stockouts may take a while to actually uh, impact the, the prices of some of these goods. So what we do in this paper, we have several specifications that try to capture uh, these with lagged uh, regression coefficients. And you can see here basically an estimated impulse response on how the monthly inflation rate at a very disaggregated sectoral level is affected by a shock to a stockout that we initially considered to be exogenous. Um, and you can see a very gradual increase. Uh, for the first couple of weeks, nothing is observable, but then there's um, a rapid increase that reaches a, a peak on, on week number six, and then uh, the effect disappears roughly after uh, three weeks, we, sorry, three months, we stop seeing any inflation effect. So it's a trans it's transitory by nature after the shock happens. Now, you may be thinking these are, uh, you know, a strong assumption to assume the stockouts are exogenous. Obviously the firms are deciding uh, when they're facing these cost pressures, both the stockouts and, the, and, the, and their prices. So we do have a, a, an, an attempt to estimate the underlying replacement cost, which is not observable. We do so by uh, introducing some structure through a model of mon a monopolistic firm with inventories that has to decide um, how much to hold over time, depending on the expectations of what will cost and demand will be in the future. Now, the model predicts a relationship that we can estimate in the data between the firm's price, the cost, and the probability of a stockout. And we use that relationship to um, create an estimate of costs at the sector level. Now I'm going to focus in here on the last column in this table to highlight the estimated cost for all stockouts when we put temporary and permanent together. And you can see that our estimates suggest that the costs, the underlying costs, for example, in electronics has increased between January 2020 and April 2021 by about 4%. Uh, followed by uh, uh, roughly half of an effect of, 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 of that magnitude, sorry, in household goods and also uh, food and beverages. And relatively very little 
uh, estimate for a cost increase in healthcare and other goods, which where we have not seen much of a stock Now, if we, instead of measuring the, the impulse response to the stock out shock, we uh, do it with respect to this estimated uh, underlying cost, we uh, get a similar picture, although the, the effect is actually um, happening faster and uh, even more transitory. Um, so, but, but qualitatively, the, um, the, the conclusion is the same. There's a significant effect that is transitory in nature. Now, in other countries, we have similar stock dynamics uh, on, on a broad basis. There are interesting uh, differences uh, uh, as well that are uh, discussed in the paper, and I won't go in detail, but I will point out the countries where we find the stockouts to be more persistent are the US, Canada, and Germany. And those turn out also to be the countries where we find um, more of an effect on inflation. So there's clearly a, a correlation between those two uh, variables. So just to summarize the key results, we document a widespread increase in shortages during the pandemic. The composition and perhaps visibility of these shortages has changed over time. We moved from temporary stockouts affecting nearly all categories of goods to permanently discontinued goods concentrated in fewer sectors. Now the inflation impact that we estimate is significant and peaks after about a couple of months. It's actually quite quick in that sense. Uh, it's concentrated in sectors and countries where the stockouts have been more persistent, uh, which suggests that retailers uh, have uh, realized after a while that the costs are um, uh, here to stay to some extent, and uh, they have decided to pass that on uh, into their prices. The effects are transitory and they disappear after three months, but that doesn't mean that the, um, that the stockouts have to be uh, transitory. In fact, we, we find them to be quite high still uh, at the end of our sample. So we believe the inflation uh, outlook for COVID will greatly depend on how quickly the shortages dissipate. Thank you very much.